Hello everyone, in this video I will be showcasing my DevCorps infantry cosplay and how to get started on making your own. As you know, I'm quite obsessed with the Siege of Frax and the DevCorps of Krieg. If you want to know why they are so cool, I highly recommend you watch my Siege of Frax lore series because it's such an awesome battle in Warhammer 40k. For real though, my office is literally covered in DevCorp stuff, so that's how obsessed I am. I've started on a journey to recreate the DevCorp uniform as accurately as I possibly can. As reference, I'm using the official artwork from the Imperial Armory books. The journey for an accurate portrayal swiftly led me to 3D printing because it allowed me to make the parts exactly how I wanted them to look. Fast forward a year or so and I've modeled essentially a whole library worth of 3D printable parts that can be found on my Etsy store. All parts that you see here are designed to be printed as easily as possible because I think it's important to make this as accessible as it can be. Anyone who has ever purchased any of these files will attest to the fact that they're extremely easy to print. But even if you don't have a printer you can still get your hands on these parts because I run a small print farm that supplies them ready to go. So let's get started with the guide. This is what my DevCorps of Greek cosplay looks like thus far. And even though there's always room for improvement, I'm very proud of where it's at and the level of accuracy to the source material. I've been working on it for a period of about two years now, and I've steadily kept making improvements, finding and adding new pieces of kit, 3D printing new parts, sending and painting those parts, figuring out how to wear the suspenders with the backpack, sewing on new buttons, learning to tie putties, the list literally goes on. And it should not be overlooked how much of a time sink it can be. But if you think that's cool, then don't let that stop you. The goal of this guide is to help you through that process and provide you with as much information as possible that I wish I had known before I started. I must give credit to another YouTuber called Iron Warrior Cosplay. He's got a great looking DevCorp cosplay himself and there's been a bit of back and forth between us sharing tips and tricks with each other. He also has published a really good comprehensive DevCorp cosplay guide that is well worth checking out. But I'm going to copy a bit of advice from that video here as well. To get to the point of having a complete uniform, we first have to start with the basics and I would honestly advise everyone to start with the trench coat. This can either be the most expensive or one of the cheapest bits of gear you will need for this cosplay. And the reason for that is that buying them online or getting any trench coat tailor-made specifically to you tends to be quite costly and it's hard to find one that will fit you properly and has the looks and characteristics that you want. But if you happen to run into one at your local military surplus store that's already perfect for you, you may just have the luck of getting it for cheap. And that is actually what happened to me because the trench coat that I use is a Swiss Army great coat that I found at my local surplus store and I think it cost me like 30 bucks or something. It was a very good start because it's double breasted like the source material and almost the same color that I wanted. When I bought it I did have to shorten the sleeves quite a lot but I used the excess cloth to modify the color myself. I also replaced the buttons with brass ones. After this I have actually purchased several more great coats to experiment with and they can give a different look to the outfit but I was never satisfied as with my first one. And for Unfortunately, it also happens to be the most comfortable to wear as it's not too heavy. You just pretty much have to be lucky to find one that suits your needs. For example, if you cosplay as a grenadier, you may want a different coat than if you were to go for an officer costume. Also, lore-wise, different regiments come in different colors and you can base your choice of color on that. As for the gas mask, I decided to go with a 3D printed one covered with leather. This allows it to keep its shape very well and get that iconic look. I've always taken parts from the infamous GP5 gas mask and repurposed those to fit my needs. Using real glasses will absolutely look the best, especially if you tape them with reflective foil on the inside. However, in my experience, they do tend to fuck up really bad no matter what. To prevent this, I've installed active ventilation in both my gas mask and my respirator box, but under bad weather conditions, it may still unfortunately happen and turn your visibility to basically none. Tip that I've gotten from someone else was, instead of using glass, to use use black stockings instead and spread those over the eyes. Even though it's a little bit darker, you'll be able to look out of it just fine, like if it were sunglasses. Admittedly, it doesn't look nearly as good as the glass, but for comfort, it's one of the best improvements for sure. The helmet I use is also 3D printed to look exactly like the source material, and I basically just painted it like I would paint a miniature. I put some black primer on it and then started dry brushing it with metallics. And I finished it off with washes and some sprinkles of rust. I'm sure there's more impressive ways of painting this, but the results are convincing enough for me. Once you've got a good trench coat combined with the gas mask and the helmet, people will start to recognize you as a DevCorp infantry. And from there, the whole process is just a matter of stacking all the different parts on top of that until you are satisfied with the results. So after this, I 
think the best step to continue is getting a belt and suspender system as this will be used to either attach or hang most of your other equipment to including your shovel pouches respirator system and likely even your backpack what i use is a really thick leather suspender from a world war ii design that has these hooks to hang your backpack onto so instead of having a traditional backpack with straps around your shoulders you just hang it from these hooks then there's usually another set of straps on the front that go underneath your armpits and allow you to secure it even further on the bottom with the suspenders you will also need to get a belt that goes with it you can then attach the suspenders directly to the belt but it's better to use dedicated belt loops that you can put on separately or the loops that are already attached to the pouches sometimes usually the way to get a complementary system is by sticking to the parts of a kit produced by a single country for example i'm using a post-war check suspender system and for example i think the clips are different from the german suspender system and it wouldn't automatically be compatible although of course with cosplay you can always make it work if you really want to by customizing it something that will also be hanging from the belt is definitely the shovel there are a lot of real shovels available out there and my first one was a swiss entrenchment tool that looked great it was exactly how i wanted it to look however i quickly found out that for cosplay purposes a real one was really cumbersome because it weighs several kilograms and to have it dragging on your hip the whole day is not very comfortable this is why i designed a 3d printed shovel that is lightweight but still looks very realistic it's actually one of my favorite pieces of gear and it will fit with most shovel holsters just fine another bonus point is that because it's plastic it will allow you to swing it around safely uh, without the risk of hurting other people in crowded conventions and you will also be allowed to bring it inside we then get to the respirator box that can also hang from your suspenders. Granted, I chose to do it a bit differently and hang it from the buttons using elastics, but this will generally be the toughest part to attach to your uniform properly anyway. If you got a dedicated coat, an option is just to permanently sew it to the front flap. Otherwise, you just have to find a way to attach it with leather straps, which I think is how the official artwork intended it, but it has never been 100% clear how it stays in place, so it's kind of up to you. For the tube, you can order one of these online quite easily. They should be too expensive since they're mass produced and they will fit most standardized gas masks like the gp5 do be aware that there are two standards out there nato 40 millimeter and the soviet ghost which may not be 100 percent compatible if you want a longer tube for example the grenadier carry it over the shoulder and it may limit your head movement if you only have one you can buy two and couple them together to extend it something that makes the dev corps infantry stand out a bit from actual world war one soldiers are the shoulder pads i'm using 3d printed ones that slide over the epaulets of my great coat and are also very easy to install i put a little 3d printed spacer between them so they are spread out a bit better but alternatively you could find a way to attach them to the suspender system or their great coat that is something i used to do and can work just fine a fun detail can be to put your regimental number on the shoulder pad to give a bit of flavor and context to your uniform within the dev corps forces the next part to cover are the putties these leg wraps are actually quite comfortable to wear and will give a lot of support so if you're walking around a convention all day they will be your best friend they're pretty easy to find online you just gotta make sure they're long enough to wrap fully around your lower leg if they're too short they tend to look a bit derpy in my opinion instead of putties you can also get long boots that also tend to go well with the uniform in my opinion now we've pretty much covered all the main elements of the cosplay. If you got all of this done, you'll be unmistakable for a Death Corps soldier. And people who know anything about Warhammer will recognize that you put a lot of effort in your cosplay to get all the details right. Lastly, like any soldier, you will need a rifle. The Death Corps infantry uses the iconic Lucius pattern less rifle. Getting one of these will probably be one of the most expensive parts of the outfit unless you intend to make it yourself. You can either make it from EVA foam or 3D printed. From experience though, I can say we aren't quite there yet there are a few things that will help pull everything together and bring it to the next level and i'm talking both in outward appearance and comfort level only experience wearing the uniform can really inform you of what it's like and generally speaking a full dev corps of creek outfit wearing the gas mask is not very comfortable unless you deliberately make it so the important thing about comfort is that you'll be able to wear it much more convincingly like it's a natural part of your daily routine for example if the glass inside your gas mask keep fucking up you won't be able to see much at a conference you probably want to be taking group pictures with your friends and if you can't even see which direction the camera is facing that's kind of silly this would result in either you not moving around as much or as comfortably confidently as you would like 
or you'll be taking your gas mask off a lot, which kind of defeats the point of the cosplay. I've had this happen to me during Castlefest where it was raining and despite an active ventilation system, I just had to take the mask off and this was not fun. Another example would be getting way too hot in your trench coat, which will make it just a miserable sweaty experience or having really thick unwieldy gloves that make it hard to do anything with your hands, which is just annoying. So for gloves, I would really recommend getting uh, ones that are as thin as possible but still look good. If you get real leather gloves, it's better to get them in a size that is a bit too small and then they will over time shape to your hand instead of them being too large and being kind of clumsy. For the heat, it is advised to find a trench coat that is not too thick. A lot of the times they are made from heavy wool and they will get really warm. So if it's hot outside, just wear as little underneath the great coat as you can. Uh, basically just a shirt. It does help to have at least one layer between your skin and the great coat because the wool can be a bit itchy. The pants are mostly covered by the great coat and the putties, so they come last on my list. However, Finding a nice wool pants in a complementary color to your great coat can do a lot to pull the whole outfit together. What I got are these riding pants that flare out to the sides a little bit and that will also look great on an officer outfit. For the gas mask, I now repeat the tip of replacing the glass with black stockings, but having the ventilation system is already a very big improvement in a lot of situations. Something that people might overlook is make sure to walk in your boots and get your feet acquainted with them so you then don't end up with painful blisters that will ruin your day and stop you from going anywhere. Bring some blister band-aids for the worst case scenario. As for putting the finishing touches on the look of the cosplay, what I like doing is wearing a balaclava to cover my neck. The Dev Corps are always deployed to hazardous war zones and to protect from acid and gas, they really should not be exposing any skin. So you've got to find a way that no skin at all is visible and the neck needs to be covered completely. I also like to pad up this area with an extra scarf to prevent the pencil neck look. The gas mask and helmet are quite large and this can make your neck look tiny, so it's a good idea to add something extra there to beef it up. Another skin exposing area I see a lot are the wrists. Usually gloves don't go high enough uh, and then you will see some bare skin exposed there. A good tip I got from Iron Warrior Cosplay is to find one of these long sleeve shirts with thumb holes. So even if your gloves are not that long, it will always be covered completely. There will be no slip ups, no sleeves going upwards over time. And the long sleeves will also help prevent itchiness from the great wool coat for your arms. The last tip I have for you is the advice to get a sling for your rifle. This will make carrying it around much easier. If you ever want to do something with your hands, you can just hang it on your shoulder instead of putting it on the ground. What tends to happen a lot is if you put it against a wall it tends to fall over and you run the risk of breaking it which is just you want to avoid at all cost it's better to just get a good strap and wearing it on your shoulder also looks very professional all right that's it i do have some plans to cover the other iconic units like the grenadier and the officer and perhaps even the engineer but this will have to come at a later video because i don't have all those parts fully finished yet i still have to do a lot of sanding and painting but i hope to one day do a separate video on those two if you're interested in the 3d printed cosplay part for those then check out my extra store because they're already there hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll try to answer any frequently asked questions will also be answered in the top comment